Well, hello. Today I'm back with Dewey, hey. a man that is full of knowledge. Well, I don't know. I might be full of something, AJ. My eyes are brown, but knowledge it isn't, because every day is a learning day. <laughs> welcome again, AJ. Glad to have you with us. He's going to tell us a lot of stuff. I'm going to pick his brain. So you just stay tuned, because this man, like I said, he's full of knowledge. So enjoy the video. <laughs> Now, Daddy has to work here, so you have to be a good girl. Back up more. Back up. Back up. Okay, sit. All right. Now, you got last one. You go lay down, because Daddy has to work, okay? That's my baby, Mara. And my other baby, uh, Mika. That's my other baby, Mika. She's the one that wards off all the critters for my chickens, so dogs are good to have around for chickens. I might have to blur their faces off for security reasons, do we? Absolutely not. <laughs> they ain't like us weenie humans. They, oh, no, nobody can see me because I'm ugly. <laughs> I mean, it's all good. My dogs are beautiful dogs. <laughs> I love my dogs. They help me out. But welcome again, AJ. Welcome all you YouTubers. I'm glad you guys are back to see our follow-up video on the soldier fly, Ben. Our chickens, which way, well, how do you want to work this, AJ? You want to do the soldier flies tonight or you want to do the chickens tonight? I think we might have to go with the soldier flies today, all do right. we? We're going to do the soldier flies tonight, so you all are going to have to tune in next week to see what the heck is going on with my chickens, which we got some cool stuff going on down there, too. You're going to love it. I got mama chickens and baby chickens that are naturally grown chickens, and you don't need all the insecticides, pesticides, and inflections and injections that they get the ones that you get from the the uh hatchery so come in tune next week we'll check out my chicken coop and all this and that but tonight we're going to go over the soldier flies as i was telling aj earlier i was kind of disappointed in my flies because i'll we'll just go through it here and i'll tell you about it i'm not going to repeat myself because i have a habit of repeating myself my wife says i've got a uh, chronic disease of uh how does she put it uh diarrhea of the mouth oh so <laughs> i've heard of that before i don't know how to shut up but i'm gonna go through the soldier fly deal with you tonight and a real quick overview i'm not gonna go details because we've already got the video out there this is just a follow-up video so i don't want to take up too much of your folks's time i just mainly want to go through things that i would do different with the soldier fly bin as i pointed out before we've got a lot of uh vegetation around here which the soldier flies like to use for mating and gathering eggs let's see if we don't get to see a soldier fly sneak in here aj do in the name of this um company you're doing now it's called full circle green right yes, full circle green that's an education center is what i'm trying to build with doing things essentially to wrap it all up in a nutshell it is a way of education <laughs> educating the homo sapien race that Sorry, we are way too wasteful and way too destructive on this planet. We can do steps. Each one of us individually can do steps, and each one of us doing them individually will make a difference in the big numbers, plain and simple. So essentially what I'm trying to do is try to educate people of knowledge that I've collected of things that we can do different to help save our planet. Sooner or later, our species is going to come to its end, sooner or later. I mean, it's just part of the world's natural cycle in my belief. Now you'll get people that'll disagree with me and that's fine. Agree with me on that or disagree. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is, is I probably won't see the end, but I'm really concerned for my grandkids. Yeah. I am very concerned with my grandkids because I honestly believe that the homo sapien race is speeding up the process. I could be wrong. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I just look at the ins and outs of what we're doing to where if we can make better choices as individuals, you put all of us individuals together, it will make a big difference. Plain and simple. Okay. Power is in numbers. You said something about um. sometimes there's a difference between a person that, use the word a lot, it's not an idiot, but it was something else that you would yes, use. Yes, I always say I always say about people being idiots. And somebody fill me in on this. I wanted to check out this before AJ come tonight because I always make the statement that we were all born idiots. I'm not sure that that's correct. I think we were all born ignorant. Yeah, I believe that. It's very hard to grow up to be an idiot because, to me, an idiot is somebody that has the knowledge there before mm -hmm. them, but they do not take the time or effort or concern to educate themselves, and therefore they grow up an idiot. And okay. That's just, 
I'm pretty sure that's the way it works, but I did not get to check out the true definition of that. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of, I want to change my saying back to instead of we were all born idiots, we were all born ignorant because we didn't know Jack Diddley. Yeah, that's so right. So we had to, everything we learned, I mean, walking isn't really that hard, right? I mean, you can walk back and forth to the mailbox, yep. you can jog, you can run, you can skip, you can swim. But I'm sorry it took you better than a year to learn how to do that. Mm. Must have been pretty tough back then. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I don't know. It's just, I'm, I'm thinking I want to change my view on that as far as being born idiots. I think we were born ignorant, and if you choose not to learn and not apply yourself, you're going to grow up to be an idiot. And trust me, there's idiots out there. There just is. <laughs> there he is, once again, the man of truth. Well, it is true. Let's see if we got a soldier fly hiding out in here. I'm not seeing... Oh, yes, there's one. There's oh, one right wow. there. Okay, can you catch him? Let's see if she was so quick. I can't get... Let's see if she'll land. Yep, she landed up here on the top of this thing. They're not a real flighty critter. Oh, hopefully she'll come back down here. But let's take a peek at the egg, egg containers here. I don't know if you can focus in on there. There are some eggs in. Again, there you go. You can see the eggs. Let me get my spectacles on here. He blew this up on the film here, but I still can't see the dang things. Right there, you see that? That one right there has got eggs in it. Oh, There's yeah. some eggs up here. Yes, this one here, they filled back here. They filled eggs in that guy. So those are full of eggs. I did not get near as many, and that's where I was telling AJ that I was disappointed. There's a few things that I would do different with this, Ben. Number one, containment. I, I think I need to contain these flies more because I have seen a total of about, all together I've probably seen eight flies is all I've seen. I seen one that landed on the nest thing laying eggs. I do not see any larvae in the bin as of right now. I got a spoiled oh. pork chop here. By God, there are some babies on there. Oh yeah. There are some babies on there. So I got a spoiled pork chop there. So some of the eggs must have hatched. Mm -hmm. So I do have some of them going. So what did we start off with? Did you have like 5,000? I started off, I started off with 5,000 babies and 500 crawl outs. And I ended up buying, there she went again. She's got to slow down for us. So I started off with 5,000 babies and 500 crawl outs. And I come to find out that's one thing that I would change different are the ramps. I don't think the ramps are working very well because they've only got this much space and this much space to crawl out of. So I think they're getting lost. Where I lost a lot of them is they crawled through underneath the screen and they came out the holes on the bottom, which was a beautiful learning experience for me because when they crawl out of the food area, they go bury themselves in dirt to pupate out and turn into flies. So what happened here is they fell out the bottom of these holes, or they came out the bottom of the holes down here on the bottom of the barrel, and they got down here, and I noticed these little piles of dark stuff sitting on top of the floor, and I'm like, what the heck's going on here? So I started moving stuff away, and oh my God, this ground was just bubbling with larvae, hmm. huge larvae. And when they started pupating out, the ground out here was just covered with pupa, with uh, larvae that were going out to find themselves a place to bury. So in the future, once I get my greenhouse up, I'm going to set up a soldier fly bin that is half food, and the other half is going to be their bedding grounds to pupate out. And that's going to be their whole bin because I will have that temperature controlled year round to where they won't freeze out. Because if you watch the other video, these guys are only good for 40 degrees north and 40 degrees south of the equator. So therefore we have to keep them warm. And warm. There's a soldier fly right back there, AJ. Oh, on yeah, the I back side of that. Let's see if she'll crawl up around here and give us a better picture. So as you can see, they're not a really feisty fly. They're not fast flyers, they're fairly good size. They almost look the size of a hornet. I'm not worried about her biting me. Come here, baby, come here, baby. Come on. And I did notice that the reason why I noticed my ramps weren't working is because I seen a lot of pupa shells in here that pupated out. If you remember back here in the corner, we did not put any food waste. So that's probably why she's back there now. That's a soldier fly back there. So what have you fed them lately? Right now you said there's a pork chop in there that you fed them. A pork chop I fed them. Now they're bringing up the food aspect of it. My God, these things are atrocious. They are atrocious at eating. Um, 
when AJ came out, they were very little babies. A week later, just to give you an idea, them 5,000 babies, one week, week after we shot that last video on the Soldier Fly video, one week later, I put a pound and a half of Made Right Hamburger mix in here that grew a little fuzz on top. Mm -hmm. I threw that in there at 8 o'clock at night. At 7 o'clock the next morning, I opened up and I lifted up that uh, canvas bag, and there was absolutely nothing left. Oh, wow. Nothing left. Sure. Them, they ate that up. And the experiment we did, if you look back at it, we put some rhubarb over here. We put uh, what I called carbohydrates over here mm -hmm. and kitchen scraps over here. They tended to like the kitchen scraps the best, and then they migrated over to the carbohydrates, and there's still some of the, if we dig around here, there's still some of the rhubarb in there, so I'm thinking they didn't care for the rhubarb much. But I threw rib bones in here, chicken bones. I threw in a huge handful of rib bones from a uh, wagon train barbecue that they did up at Keister. I threw a huge handful of rib bones in there when we got home that night, and it was probably about 10 o'clock at night. And then we threw a breakfast for the wagon train the next morning. So I didn't get home until about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And I come down to see how they did on the ribs, because they were good ribs. And <laughs> people don't know how the hell to eat ribs either. For crying out loud, when you're eating a rib, that thing should be clean when you're done. <laughs> I mean, good gosh. These poor things had a feast for the rest of us, you know. Oh. I don't know. I don't want to eat somebody else's slobber. But I know. Otherwise, I'd have been cleaning them bones up before I threw them in there. But That's right. I let them do it, you know, because I'm not that sick. I'm uh, a little <laughs> sick. <laughs> but anyways, I came back at 2 o'clock the next afternoon and all them bones, and I know I threw in at least, it was a handful, at least that big of bones uh, that I threw in. Half of an aluminum baking tray that you use on your grill. Yeah. More or less, I threw half of that in. When I came down the next day at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so do the math, from 10 p.m. to 2 p.m. the next day is, what, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 hours. 16 hours later, those bones were clean, and the ends of the bones that are nice and soft that are really good to chew on, yeah. they got a lot of good flavor, they were dented in a good half of an inch. Wow. I mean, they just tore it. I mean, everything I put in there, they tore it up. Oh, I wow. mean, I can understand where the one guy from Living Web Farms was talking about how he thought his neighbor was pulling a joke on him and going over and taking the food out of the bin because mm -hmm. he'd come back the next morning, it was gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, they ate. The whole cycle from them, from them babies to where they started crawling out, we had very warm temperatures here, very humid temperatures. So from the time they were the itty-bitty babies and crawling out, it wasn't, it wasn't two and a half weeks. They were already starting to crawl out, and I buried um, a number of them. I ended up getting another thousand. That's why my numbers is. That's why I'm very disappointed in my numbers, because I ended up getting a thousand more crawlouts. There's that soldier fly again. She's looking for a place to nest here. Come on, baby. So can they sting or anything? No, they can't sting. They do not have mouth parts. There's this guy. I'm hoping to get him to land on my hand here. Come on, baby. And, that's, and they're male and female, right? They have to be the different I species? I can't or? tell you that. Okay. There there she is. She had it. There, now she's up against the white. There is a soldier fly in its work. That's a mother soldier fly looking for a place to lay her eggs. Come on, baby, lay me some eggs. Let's so, get this happening. So how do they get pregnant if there's not that many eggs? I mean, um, well, flies right now, how does one... How do people get pregnant? You have sex for yeah, crying out loud. <laughs> yeah, but if she had sex, where's the other flies? I mean, so they well, must have had sex I'm, and it died, you think? That's what I'm wondering. I don't know if they are... I can't answer that question. I'm not that educated here again. Okay, I'm throwing I'm, one at you. I'm still, I'm still ignorant, man. I'm still learning. Every okay. day is a learning process, right. so I'm learning a lot on this. This is why it's important for you people to let me know. Don't be shy. Yeah. I don't care if you kick me in the gonads mm -hmm. because I didn't know the right answer. Or I blurted out something I don't know. If I said something I don't know, correct me. I'm not God. I don't know at all. Exactly. You know, I'm not perfection. I mean, right, sorry. Buddy. I used to be a stud muffin, but I ain't no more. <laughs> it's just the way it is. I hear you do it. <laughs> so, I mean, it boils down. I don't know exactly how they go about the mating process, but I know we did get some eggs. So, obviously... Yeah. Something's going on out here, but like I said, I think I need to contain them because they got the great wide world out here. If there is something laying out there in the jungle out here, the or the forest or back 40, I call it. It's not 40, but mm -hmm. the backyard here that they can lay their eggs around, 
that smells good for them to eat, yeah. well, they done deposited their eggs over there. So I think I need to contain them. That's okay. one thing I would do different. Uh, I would definitely do the crawl out uh, system that I have set up. I would do that different because I don't. I simply think that there was a lot of larvae that got trapped in there that couldn't find their way out because I've only got these two little ramps for them to go out. And I don't think all the other soldier fly beds that I've seen, they've got a trail all the way around the outside where they can go to and they can climb up and drop out. So I'm going to change that for the next soldier fly bed. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this one. Come here, baby. Let's get a good picture of you. There we go. We're on the white again there. So, and I'm thinking with dropping out, I probably fed maybe 200 to my chickens, and oh my God, they went, they went eight bananas over them. Mm -hmm. They loved them. So I only fed about 500 out of them to them. I have no idea how many of them fell out of the bottom of this mm -hmm. bin, but it gave me a good idea that if I was to set up on big scale, I could have a five by six area of food scraps and a 10 by 20 area of dirt where they can just simply crawl right out of the food scraps, go over to the dirt, lay their eggs, boom, or not lay their eggs, pupate out, get back up and set up their nesting boxes. There she is. She's on the nesting box right now. She found it. She's hanging on the side there. I don't know. Maybe we might be able to get her laying some eggs. Who knows? I don't know. But they go up there. God, that'd be awesome if she lays some eggs. Come on, lay, mama. <laughs> Trying to get the focus. Well, you see, you can see the one pocket right. You can see the one pocket right beside it that's full. Oh, I don't want to disturb her. There's one pocket right there beside her, right above her butt there, that's already full of eggs. So they are laying eggs, but there should be. They should be buzzing around here like crazy because I, I know there's at least, I know there's at least 1,200 crawlouts. That got to crawl out and bury themselves into dirt. So, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but my numbers really suck. Sorry, I screwed up. Mm -hmm. It's the way it is, but sure. I learned something from it, so it's awesome. I mean, this is probably not the best setup because, like I said, they did crawl past through the screen and came out the hole on the bottom. But there again, like I said, I learned something because they migrated from there right out here into the dirt and they laid and pupated out and... We had flies. Now, where they all went, I don't know. But one thing that is very interesting, I have a fly trap over here. Hold on for a second, Dewey. Okay. If any viewer knows of someone that they can suggest to Dewey about who um, has a different setup, let me know so I can give them some names so he can also check out their videos. Yes, So you can learn awesome. something from them also. That would be awesome. So the, I was telling you last on the last video about that they don't like um, anaerobic situations mm -hmm. i have an awesome recipe i'm going to throw that out there for you guys right now if you want to catch flies the pesky house flies when it's talking about i mean this has nothing to do with soldier flies but it's kind of interesting i've been watching this thing for black soldier flies this bin here is about three weeks old and it needs water but essentially what you want to do with this is they got that nasty fly trap smell stuff and it stinks like shit. I mean, it stuff. Beep, beep. <laughs> You're good. It, it <laughs> smells really bad. But a better, a better recipe for you. It does. It smells bad. I mean. <laughs> but a better recipe for you is take a half a cup of, of sugar. These here things here are the ones that they come with. Back to my original story. This thing stinks pretty bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very anaerobic in there, but I've been watching, and I have not caught a black soldier fly in here yet. Okay. In three weeks, I've caught this many flies in here. Oh. But I started out with a half a cup of sugar, filled the water line up to the water line or whatever, half a gallon. Blah. I mean, it's pretty simple. It's not rocket science. Half a cup of sugar, half a gallon of water, and about a half an orange sliced up, and a half a package of bread yeast. Throw it in there, mix that up, and I guarantee you it smells citrusy for the first week. And then after that, look out. But it's not nearly offensive as the stuff that you get at Boom Guards is where I originally got that fly bait stuff that they put in here. Mm -hmm. I mean, that stuff there will attract flies from miles around. But as you can see, this attracts flies big time. This makes excellent fertilizer. Excellent fertilizer. You treat it like raw manure. Mm -hmm. You put it in your compost pile, let it compost down, but this makes excellent fertilizer also. Awesome.
So that's just a little side note. So to prove the point that soldier flies do not like anaerobic, they like aerobic, which mm -hmm. means that it doesn't smell rancid. Now you were in there, AJ. Did you smell any offensive odors while we were in there? No, it wasn't bad. No. So if it would have been bad, that mother fly that we got to so proudly watch, mm -hmm. she would have not been in there. So here again, I think containment is the main thing that I'm going to have to do. Containment of the flies to keep them in a certain area, to keep them around the food source and whatnot. Because like I said, they, they got a great wild world out here. Why would you hang around this crappy little shed when you can fly the coop, you know? That's right. what I'm saying. Yeah. So uh, if there's anything that anybody sees that I might have done wrong here that the soldier fly did not partake in the mating process and laying me more eggs... I mean, I'm hoping right now that them eggs will hatch out. Evidently, some of them have because we do have activity going on in the bin yet. And I know darn good and well enough that the babies that we threw in there first off, they all pupated out. I mean, in a matter of a week, they went from being about the half of the size of a rice kernel to about a full cooked rice kernel. And in two weeks, them things were huge. It was amazing. I could not believe how much food those things put away. I mean, I threw a lot of food in there. And it just kept disappearing. It was amazing. So I'm very excited about how much food that they can consume. And I want to do a lot more research and, and checking out to make sure that there isn't no... Because uh, somebody had brought this up to me that you have to be careful about... What the hell? And what the heck is it called now? Hmm. Um, uh, cross con Not cross-contamination, but... Um, it's the same thing as when they were feeding animal parts to cattle and whatnot. Oh, yeah, I know what you're saying. What, what are they calling it? Uh, it's called some, there's some scientific name for it, but the mad cow disease came from it. Yep, leave a comment. Let us know if you know the yeah, answer to that. If somebody knows what's going on, it's right on the tip of my tongue, but I can't spit it out because, I don't know, I've been talking and I'm dry now. But anyway. <laughs> I hear you, Dewey. The, doing bottom, the bottom line is, is I think, and I don't know this for sure, so I'm going to have to do some research, and if somebody knows... I'm thinking that once it runs through the soldier fly, that they kill all them um, bacterias or not. They're not bacterias. Come on, Dewey. Not pathogens. Like Pathogen, yes. Oh, Path AJ! Yes. AJ! See, AJ's not as ignorant <laughs> as he thinks he is. How well, <laughs> I'm not ignorant. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, cross combat. Uh, Cross pathogens is one of the things that I'm worried about whether these things are going to, but I know they're safe to feed to chickens because a lot of people are doing it. They're safe to feed mm -hmm. to baby pigs. Now, I would not feed them to baby pigs in a confinement because if you got diarrhea, you better not go feed pigs in a confinement because right. they can't handle it. That's right. Uh, the pigs I grew up with, here was the thing I was telling you about us being so bacteria free mm -hmm. and how we become weaker as a species. Back when I was growing up, we fed the pigs things the chickens wouldn't eat. Now, if you can imagine mm. that, they'd chow down on it. Yeah. We ate pork my whole life growing up. I've never gotten sick on pork in my yeah. life. Never gotten sick on pork in my life. So I, I'm thinking we need to consider that, too, in our species, that all this 90% germ killer and all this and that, yeah. blah, blah, blah. It's, you know, you can carry it to an extent let's be clean but for crying out loud you don't have to be a surgeon to eat your lunch for crying right. out loud Come so on, question man. for you okay bones if the bones are left what's the best way to dispose of bones because bones don't break down do they they do in a compost system yes they will okay so it just takes a long time in the compost system to um, break down or it depends on your compost system i've worked on i put a hoop building over a pig digester okay for a pig confinement and that gentleman, I was freaking out when we had to go down there and put this thing over this thing because it had been raining all morning, and I'm like, this is going to suck putting a building over the top of a pig digester, you know? I'm oh, thinking man. nasty, rotten pigs, yeah. and blah, 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 dead animals, you know? Dead animals reek, big time. But we got down there, and it smelled like molasses. It was, oh. it was awesome. And he was telling me that in three months, about all you're going to find out of that pig is teeth after three months. Dang. And that pig is gone. Now what they do there is they they throw a pig in. They got three bays. And they throw a pig in, cover it up with wood chips. And then when the next pig dies, they throw it in, cover it up with wood chips. And they keep going until that bin is full. Okay. Once that bin is full, they start on the next bin. By the time they get the second bin full, they're able to start pulling out of the first bin and filling the third bin. Ten. 
So by the time oh. the third bin is full, mm -hmm. the first bin is empty, and they can start filling the oh, first wow. bin and taking out of the center bin. So they just keep re-rotating this stuff, and it just, there's no, there was no offensive smell. It was amazing to me. I was blown away. I could oh. not believe it. And when he told me that you might be able to find teeth after oh. three months, you'd be doing good. That's awesome. And the teeth are the hardest part of the bone. So you're oh. talking digesting an entire pig. Wow. Your teeth are your hardest bone in your body. Okay. They are the hardest bone in your body. So that's why it takes longer for them to break down. Duh. Oh, wow. I mean, if you have a bone, I can, there's a jaw bone laying up there in the woods somewhere from where I let the critters clean up a, a steer skull that I got from one of my clients. That bone's been laying there for five years. It yeah. ain't gone nowhere. But if you look at my steer head, the mice have been chewing on the mm -hmm. horns. They've been chewing on the bones. My dog has been fighting mice out of there. They've been using it for a house. So yeah. critters do utilize the bones and whatnot, and they will break down. But in a compost setting, okay. yes, you can break bones down. Okay, They will break you. down. Right. If you was to bury a human body, for instance. <laughs> 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 and if nobody finds it, it will disappear, and there's no DNA left unless there's still bugs around. If don't try this at home, around, viewers. Yes, don't try this at home. I don't recommend burying a human body, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Nothing. No, I'm not going to say that. I'll get, people think I'm a whack guy. I have never tried human flesh in my life, and oh, I don't intend to. That's cannibalism. Yuck. Yes, I've never done so, and I don't intend to. boy, because you won't see AJ ever again <laughs> making videos. <laughs> if I'm not back, you know who ate me. <laughs> <laughs> he likes dark meat. <laughs> yes, I do, and it's chicken. <laughs> I'm not being racist here. I'm just saying, I like dark meat on chicken. It beats the heck out of the white meat. <laughs> Although I am, a, I can't say that either. I was just about ready to say I'm a kitty man. You don't have to walk that up. <laughs> I don't know how far you can go with this, AJ. But come on, people, we're having fun. What the heck? You know, laughter is good for the soul. It's very good for the soul. It's healthy for you. So enjoy your life, people. We got a beautiful planet here to enjoy. Let's enjoy it. Let's not ruin it, for crying out loud. I got two grandsons. I don't want to sell them like a selfish prick. Yeah. But hey, take care of it for them, if nothing else. If you don't care about your grandchildren, that's your problem. Exactly. I care about my grandchildren. That's good. I want to take care of this for our grandchildren and future generations to come. Please. That's awesome. Take care of our planet, would you, people? Awesome. Thank you again, AJ. I appreciate your time, man. Yep. I want to say um, thank you, Dewey, for your time. You're if, welcome. If you're interested in finan financially supporting Dewey, his business is Full Circle Grain. Yep. So look me up. Every dollar counts, and he will use your money for good. It won't go to waste. Definitely. And he's, he's here to definitely make the world a better place. Yes. One soldier fly at a time. And I ask you to do the same. Come on, people. Let's do this. <laughs> Thank you, Dewey. You're welcome. Viewers, you have a great day. You too. Bye.